Hello, I'm Javier Hernandez with the United States Courts. Federal courts across the country are using specialized programs to help defendants and offenders re-enter their communities. In San Francisco, there are two of these programs designed to help high-risk individuals rebuild their lives. In 2015, Anthony Jackson was arrested for selling illegal drugs. I pretty much thought I was going to be serving a three to five year sentence according to my charges. But then his lawyer heard about a pilot intervention program for offenders whose crimes are driven by their addictions. The program is now known as ATIP, or Alternatives to Incarceration Program. Um, helping people who have a history of substance use needs that match different resources in the community to improve their lives uh, while they're awaiting their sentencing uh, for the charge. If they meet the criteria of high need um, and high risk, they are uh, eligible for the program. Uh, and um, the goal of it is uh, if they work with us over the course of a year and are able to graduate, uh, that they would not uh, uh, be sentenced to uh, incarceration. So that's, the, uh, that's basically the, uh, the goal. So you need to uh, stay uh, sober. Helping the participants along the way are federal judges, a federal defender, therapist, resource coordinator, and a pretrial officer. Usually on the caseload, you would see them once a month, depending on risk, or um, every couple of months. But high intensity, I would see them on a weekly basis and be in contact with them at least once or twice a week. Before the pandemic, ATIP team meetings and participant meetings were in person. Now, most of the program is virtual. Participants attend group substance abuse therapy, and they have access to resources for education and housing. ATIP also provides a Courage to Change program, which helps participants to think through their problems and to anticipate the consequences of their actions. They have been involved with criminal thinking for a long time. I think that some of them, depending on um, their age, you know, they're ready to change, but they don't know how to do that. I think the intervention, the, the, the arrest and engagement and pretrial uh, is a, is a wake-up call. But change is difficult, and trust in the program comes slowly. Eventually, ATIP participants buy into the program and then each other. Soon, they begin to hold their classmates accountable. In group, one bad report can affect everyone. It made, made me want to interact with my fellow participants to kind of nudge them to do well. Because I don't want to hear that you're doing bad. You know, I, I don't want to be, you know, I have to be there. You know, we're all in the same boat. But, you know, I want to hear that you're doing good. In the three divisions, we've had over 60 graduates. Uh, every graduation that we have, I check, what would I have done if I had to sentence somebody at the low end of the guidelines? And then I multiply the amount of months that that person would have been incarcerated by the average cost. And if you do that, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars with most of the, uh, of the participants that we save in costs um, from incarceration, which is the least important thing. The other program in the Bay Area is a re-entry court that helps people coming out of prison return to society. The court shares resources with ATIP, and there are some familiar faces at the team meeting. We have people from all parts of the system participating, the U.S. Attorney, the Federal Defender, U.S. Probation. Um, it's a therapeutic court, so we have a, a counselor, and I know you've met him, Michael Redd, he works with us, uh, and, um, and then of course judges. Who, um, so that's the team, and it really is a collaborative court. We are a team. We make team decisions. It's not a hierarchy, it's a team approach. And it's a needs-based court, too. Like ATIP, the re-entry court focuses on high-risk individuals who struggle with addiction. And for many of them, the world is much different than they remember. Again, participants have to lean on each other. And so especially people who have been incarcerated for a long time and maybe aren't aware of what a smartphone is or how to really function with a smartphone, um, we've had to troubleshoot that in a lot of ways. Uh, so some ways of doing that are really asking for support from the participants, uh, where they'll reach out to each other and talk about how to use Zoom and what capability and functions are. It's not even so much what they can do for you. It's the fact that you, you, you kind of know they got your back. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you say, well, I ain't got no clothes, Wyatt will find them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he'll find somebody that will hook you up. And that kind of, like, relieves stress. Because getting out is stressful. You have so much to cope with. But reentry court, they make it, like, where it's like, dude, chill. We got you. Participants of both programs and their families come together for graduation ceremonies. It's a time to share the success and promise of a better future. When we have our graduations that we interface with clients, we have events where the families come to see the difference. So it's not it's not just the client, it's, it's the family. And, in the fam and, and with the family, I think it's the larger community. I mean, it's ripple effects, they, it ripple effects that go out, you know, as a result of their successes. And of course, it's, you know, it saves money, but more than that, it, it saves lives, you know, because we know that, um, that, that um, uh, substance use destroys lives. One of the things I say is that I'm in the misery business. No one comes to see me in a happy place. And that's as true of civil litigation as it is of criminal. And I think that reentry and ATIP give us the opportunity to be part of people's successes and not just their punishment. Judge Beeler and Judge Ulrich say that the programs are opt-in for all team members. ATIP and re-entry activities are in addition to their normal court duties. For the U.S. Courts, I'm Javier Hernandez in Washington.